so uh, as Claudia just briefly introduced me, um, I'm Typhoon. Uh, I'm the elder brother of uh, Ramsey, who is now 21 years old. Uh, he is an artist and a designer. Uh, this is the slogan we have. Um, I'm based in Ankara. I work as a, a communications officer for UN Women. Uh, so that's my everyday job. But as Claudia said, Remo uh, is really a big part of my life. Um, and why? This is my brother saying hello. He is not with us today because he is with his uh, father at a farm in Antalya right now. The sun is up, it's around 30 degrees, so he chose to stay there, I think. Uh, but he just sent uh, his uh, greetings to all of us. He's just picking olives from the olive trees. Uh, it's something that can be missed from Oslo. Uh, I also lived in Oslo for a while, and it's also an amazing city. Um, but for us, uh, how we started with the with Remo, with our brand, it's actually a journey of uh, two brothers. I, here on the left side, you can see the moments we had. To be. On the right side, you are seeing Ramsey performing uh, his art. So when he was two years old, we uh, captured that something was wrong with Ramsey, something was different with Ramsey. Uh, he was not responding to us. Uh, he was he wasn't responding to noisy voices. And we learned that he had autism, and then everything is changed for us suddenly. I mean, I was I, I was eight uh, years old at that time, and it was also very challenging for me uh, to uh, to understand that something was different with him. Um, so at the beginning, till he became six years old or seven years old, he was, you just understood him as, you just wanted to see him as a spoiled and always crying, yelling uh, child. But then when he uh, grew, grew, uh, we started understanding the difference, the difference between him and the other kids in the school he goes. So we tried actually everything. We tried to uh, make him speak because he's not, he wasn't able to uh, talk to us. So he tried swimming, he tried ice skating, he tried piano, and then he walked on the piano instead of playing it, so it didn't really work. And he tried horse riding, he tried music therapy. He swam with the dolphins for two weeks. The sounds of, the, I mean, it was a program where the sound of dolphins is believed to uh, heal uh, the persons with autism. So we, and all this actually helped because we wanted to uh, find something that can uh, help us to express himself so that he doesn't, uh, his many negative behaviors then can lynch. But there was also another problem because he wasn't accepted at the school. So it was uh, eight years of struggling, uh, of making the parents, the chi teachers, the other uh, kids at the school accept Ramsey as he is. But it was really hard. And we really struggled every single year. And that struggle was a burden specifically on the shoulders of my mother and, of course, my father and me. And he got a pen, he started drawing. He was at a party, and he was, a, he was visiting uh, my mother's uh, friend with my mom, and then he just got a pen and he started drawing and he never stopped. So first he drew things that he wanted to tell us, like if he wanted to eat burger, then he drew burger, if he wanted to eat sushi, and what he drew was basically a sushi. Then he began drawing his thoughts, his desires, um, and he started to express himself through drawing. And 
the dreams he dreamed about and the surrounding he had inspired him. So he had different kinds of drawings which he developed from the age of 10 till now. So as you can see, the drawings are different. And I mean, the styles are different. So um, he just used different techniques, but these techniques were not taught. It was just coming up, out from his mind. And his, uh, one of his teachers called this uh, neuro art. And um, since he was started, since he started to communicate through art, he slowly and slowly stopped taking medicines, uh, which he was taking uh, because of the uh, because of the hyperactive behaviors he had. Um, so he just stopped it, and then he continued expressing himself through community, uh, through art instead of ex instead of expressing himself through yelling, crying. So art basically helped him. And we supported him all the way out. So we uh, really struggled very hard to, uh, to him to be accepted to a fine arts high school in Turkey. So he, uh, and then we managed it, but it was also really challenging. My mother, uh, he, she struggled a lot and he, she managed to change the legislation in order to, uh, in order for Ramsey to start uh, start fine art school in Ankara. And then he started taking art, ceramic art courses because we wanted him to, we didn't want him to take painting courses because his had, he had really special lines. But we wanted him to do three dimensional uh, art pieces. So we encouraged him to create ceramic art and then he he actually uh, succeeded. You can see every drawing is another uh, project of Ramsey. So first he draws, then he applies to applies it to ceramic art. And the other thing that wasn't sold, okay, he express he is now expressing himself through art, and that's fine. But he was still excluded. He was still not accepted because he was different. And we have this tendency of just accepting the people who are ordinary, so to speak, who are normal, so to speak, so to say. And that's how our society was back in times built up. The cities, the school system, everything is just built up for a young, uh, not having any disabilities, uh, strong uh, man. So when you look at the sidewalks, when you look at the, the how the cities are designed, when you look at the school system, it used to be like that, and now it's changing. It's changing faster in countries like Norway, and it's changing slower in the developing countries. But there is a change, and you wanted to take part in, in this change. So one day when I was walking uh, in Copenhagen uh, in uh, Makassing, I just, uh, again, so I'm so addicted to uh, Danish design. So I just saw the glasses they had uh, from different brands. And I just said, well, I mean, why not creating uh, different interior products out of what Ramsey did? So in that way, maybe Ramsey can uh, include another identity into his identity of being an artist. Because Remo, uh, as a brand, doesn't uh, accept autism as a disease, but it accepts is it as a difference, as an identity that, as another identity that we all have. And it's possible to, to make a change. If, if it is possible, if, if the options are given, so we created the brand Remo. And why Remo? Because Ramsey is a really old name. And we really didn't want to call him Ramsey when he was a little boy. So first we inspired by 
Pavarotti, and then we called him Ramosotti, and then it turned out to be Renzo, and then uh, at the end it was Remo. So Remo became the uh, name of the brand. Uh, and in Remo, every, um, every product, every drawing has a story behind. So Ramsey tells me what he uh, draws, and then I make, I turn them into stories. For example, the one in the middle and uh, left to the cat, it's wanna be a little mermaid because he really liked the little mermaid in Copenhagen. And then he just drew it. And he's, I, when I asked him what it was, he said, this is little mermaid. And then I asked him, but you know what? This doesn't really look like a little mermaid. And then he said, well, but she wants to be. So she is not a little mermaid yet, but she wants to be. And the cat is the one of the cats, one of the stray cats that comes and eats the uh, food of our dog. So he just, uh, we just make products with the stories behind. And those stories are uh, the, uh, from the mind of Ramsey. All of these creatures are his uh, friends. It started to be liked. It started to expand I mean, and remo. It found uh, its place in different showrooms, uh, different brands both in Scandinavia and in Turkey. And then it started to have its own audience. As you can see, this is, uh, for example, um, I saw a tiger. And slowly his friends who were excluding him at high school, they started to have an interest on him because he was only 16 years old at the time and he had already a brand. He had already products. He was already applying his art to uh, product making. So suddenly he became, started becoming popular. And for example, this is uh, a Cypriot panda. Uh, so this panda is from Cyprus because Ramsey thinks that People in Cyprus, they have big eyes and a big mouth, which never stops talking. This is another perception Ramsey has uh, of the Eiffel Tower. And Paris is basically the place, uh, Ramsey's world. He started also making collaborations. So we collaborated with different brands to create a uh, joint Products. So we joined our forces with different uh, brands, um, different fashion brands to uh, create different uh, in text. We opened Ramses' first exhibition in uh, Ankara, in Turkey, which was then called uh, an Otis Theory. And as um, you can see the uh, friends of Ramsey, they were, they just hired a bus and then all of them came with that bus. It was around 40, uh, 40 to uh, 50 uh, students from his art school. So he was the uh, most popular one. And this is his auntie, which he drew, you can see it in the video. And we wanted to use acetate papers in order for people to feel them inside of uh, the world of uh, Ramsey. And okay, Ramsey was then accepted, but we also wanted to make a change in the societies, not only in the place we were living, but also in different countries. So, while I was doing my master's uh, in the beautiful Oshuo, um, we opened the exhibition Autism Equals to Human. Is it possible to start talking? That was our uh, question mark. And then there, we also wanted to support others and we wanted to empower in solid, we wanted to be empowered in solidarity. So we collaborated with two other artists, two other Norwegian young artists called Agnes Sundby 
and Martin Stachbaken, and we opened Autism Human in 2017 uh, at Stuke and School uh, uh, at Galleries Gallery Autonome, uh, and and then we. Uh, kind of created a space, provided a space for others to also start their journey of social inclusion through collaboration. So when you co-create, then you are stronger. And then this um, exhibition was also being covered by um, NRCO. And we opened another exhibition in Istanbul um, again, in the same format, and wherever we open, we, um, we create, we conduct panels with different people, with different experts. Our audience is uh, generally uh, people, the families, uh, which have members uh, of persons with also creates a space for us to discuss. And Remo became the sponsor of Rings's exhibition. So basically, the uh, budget the uh, brand has directly goes to the exhibitions he opens uh, around the world. So we were planning opening an exhibition in Montreal, Canada uh, this year. We're just in front of. And here you see uh, Rames's uh, photo. Having some of the envelopes of his grandmother. And then the collaborations were also done with suddenly with the worldwide known brands such as Apple. So Apple introduced its new uh, iPad Pro. Uh, product with Ramsey uh, with his perfect apples. We also became a bigger family. Uh, all these photos are uh, from Oslo. So as you can see, uh, there are here people with different backgrounds stand together. Artists, academics, academicians. Uh, politicians, uh, families having uh, children with autism. And then this is actually, this actually was also a place for, to give an inspiration to those families. Because the thing is, we always talk about um, the children with autism. But when these children, when they grow old, when they become adults, then that's the, that's the true challenge. Because you cannot just let a person live in a dormitory or a special healthcare center uh, and treating them as people with sickness, with disease, and they just live the day. They need to, I mean, everyone, can have a talent, and this has to be discovered. And Ramsey basically made my career because, because of him, I started working in social inclusion, and because of him, I did my master's degree in Oslo, and I uh, wrote a um, in uh, Nordic friends with social purposes. And I also started working and making a career within the United Nations system, thanks to him, because Remo was, Remo just became my laboratory in order to create, innovate, and co-create with people. With, and at the end, we had a good social purpose. And then it also affected my mom a lot. Uh, she uh, was the editor of a we called Autism, Education, Art, and Space, uh, with authors from both Norway and Turkey. And then this book uh, is available now online. 
And at the end, what everyone can do, what else we can do? The thing is that the COVID-19 really showed us that if any of us is poor, if any of us has uh, vulnerabilities, it can affect all of us because we are living in a globalized world. So it is really important that we all live in a society where everyone uh, has fair and equal rights and opportunities. Uh, I mean, uh, no matter uh, what kind of difference you have, what kind of identity you have. And we really need to build back better and get when we end COVID-19, we need to back, be back with a better society in order to heal the bond of the globe. So what, is, what should be done is just accepting and living in togetherness and understand that people should not be excluded because of their differences. So first, I mean, the behaviors that we think that are wrong, which the autist persons with autism uh, have, we think that these behaviors are wrong because it doesn't represent the majority. So we also need to understand that, that we should, uh, that the world will be a better place if we all live uh, with our differences through accepting. So, thanks uh, to and thank you very much. Uh, now I just open the space to any uh, questions. I hope that I summarized it in a, a good way. So I'll just stop my screen sharing now and uh, I'm just ready to uh, answer any questions that might be raised. Thank you.